hello Lizzie here and today we're going to talk about and make the gift giving pouch which are these two here so I did one for the pattern and then I got carried away and I made another one no that one and then that one <laughs> and uh, they're really good I'm going to show you their secret in a second but that's the pattern that you can get from my website so it's lizziecurtis.com and just pop into the shop and you'll find this uh, this pattern under small bags and pouches and that's the gift giving pouch so i'll just put that to one side in case i need to refer to it so yeah so these are the pouches so this is the one that i made for the pattern and this is the second one that i made and i think i'll probably make a few more of these because uh, they've got a bit of a secret to them so the, the great thing is you've got a zippy little um, pocket at the front there uh, with a tassel. Uh, you don't have to do tassels, but I like to tassel. Um, so you can put little bits and pieces in there. But if I turn them around, you'll see what I mean. They're see-through. <laughs> I like to see that on the camera, don't you? So they've both got tassels on the long zip as well. You can see how that looks. But also, because it's a gift-giving pouch, it means that you can make this as part of the present to give to somebody it could be their birthday it could be valentine it could be easter it could obviously be christmas or the holiday season so any time of year but it is one of those pouches where it's just got that surprise element to it to be perfectly honest they're really really practical <laughs> i couldn't think of another word to say they are super practical because obviously you can put your makeup in there afterwards and you can put your own creams and potions in there and um, maybe if you're going maybe on a little mini break somewhere you can pop everything in there and see everything at a glance so you can have one for makeup one for your nails one for the bathroom etc 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 so I think they're a great make. Obviously with these we're going to be using vinyl so have a little little look around for vinyl and I'm sure you'll find one that you can use. Um, at the back just a little mention because I know somebody may ask me this. I have just machine stitched the vinyl directly onto the zip. Now you may well want to add some binding. I decided I didn't want to but you could add a piece of binding there just so you've got a so you can see the top kind of gives it a picture frame if you see what I mean so you might want to do that um, I decided I didn't want to so entirely up to you great thing about all of my patterns is that they can all be changed in different ways so that's the gift giving pouch so I may not follow the pattern exactly I may chop and change around a little bit but the, the, the actual construction if you like of the bag is exactly the same as the pattern but maybe in different parts so we've got all the pieces and um, ready prepared now I've actually put the zip tabs on my zip but I'm going to show you how that works because um, you need to see what I do whether that's good for you or not that's a different matter we've got some vinyl there oh look you can just about see it got fingerprints all over it so let's not lose that we've got a little tiny zip to go in that front pocket we've got the side pieces we've got a zip um, tab to sh I'll show you how to do that the front pocket as well the front of the pouch and actually I'm lining with the same fabric I thought that could be quite nice as a as a change and easily you would get two of these out of a fat quarter um, whether you use the lining or not you should still be able to get it out as a squeeze so the first thing we're going to do is actually put the zip in the pocket part um, and it's just a case of um, folding this over a quarter of an inch and top stitching it straight onto the zip and um, there's no need to stitch right sides together and flip it and then top stitch so literally just make sure you've got the right side um, and just finger press that long edge down um, and you could obviously you could use your iron if you wanted to so just finger press that down okay and then all we're going to do is pop that over the top of the zip. So if I hold that up and show you, there we go. I'll just get that straight because it's just not straight. And I want you to see it straight. <laughs> there we go. So I've, I've literally folded that end uh, edge over a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to top stitch it in place, okay? Just be careful of your zip slider. Move it out of the way if you need to. So I'm going to take that down my zip a little bit and if you wanted to you could just stitch across the ends of the zip I mean I'm using um, a piece of zip on the roll and uh, sometimes just cutting that end uh, sorry stitching over the ends <laughs> secures them you don't want to cut the end <laughs> so I'm just going to go a little way 
and then I'm just going to pop my slider past them. Don't slide it off. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but don't don't do that. <laughs> so straight across. So I've just literally top stitched. I have not. Um, I've not stitched and then flipped. So there we are. So there's our zip installed. So I'm just going to move that slider out of the way again. And I'm just, just going to cut those ends off neatly. Um, and then I shall, I think what I'll do is I'll just actually stitch the ends of that zip together so it's nice and neat and I don't have to think about it anymore. I'll keep my zipper foot on. So let's have a look. And I'll tell you what you could use. You could use a little sort of stiletto to hold all of that together. So let's just re-thread my needle. <laughs> So yeah, use your stiletto, if you've got one, or a pokey tool, just to pop those teeth together and just to hold them there. Obviously be very careful of your, your, your teeth, the teeth on the, on the zipper and your machine. And just do a little back stitch there just to hold it. There we go, not too bad. So, so there is our zip installed and neatened off. It's got, got a little bit of a thread there. Let's cut that. Okay, so now what we want to do is actually attach it to the front panel, the big front panel. So what I want you to do is me oops, measure down from the top, from the top of your pocket. So think about the direction of your fabric if it's directional. So that's three and three quarter inches from the top. So let's find my tape measure on my ruler. Let's, oh, here we go. So yeah, so if it's um, directional fabric, you just want to be careful that, I want my pen, so let's find a pen quickly. Here we go, this one will be fine. Um, it's just, as I say, just be, be mindful. So three and three quarter inches, and I'm just going to draw a line with my pen. And you want to place your pocket edge, or your zip teeth, sorry, your zip tape edge on that mark, okay? And if you want to, you could pin it or you could just hold, have quilting clips either end just to hold it in place. But I'll, I'll pop a pin through just to hold it and I'll put a clip on the other end. And if you wanted to draw a line all the way across, then you draw a line all the way across and that will give you a, an idea of where you're going. That's it. Okay. So again, what we're going to do is just uh, pop it under the me the machine, under the zipper foot again, and then we'll change out to a regular foot. Um, this time I come from the other end, so I'm going to move my needle right across to the left. Now you won't be able to see the teeth of the zip, but your zipper foot will feed it, uh, feel it. So um, it, it won't jump over, you, you won't have any danger of going over the top of your zip teeth. And just keep that nice and straight. Just be careful of when you go past that zip slider and you can always move it if you think it's going to get in the way. So straight across little back stitch if you want to. No need to top stitch this. So then all we can do if we bring that pocket down we just need to trim a little bit off the side there. It should sit absolutely beautifully. So it's not going to sit where you, if I pulled that front down can you see you can see the whole of the zip. It's not going to sit like that. It's going to sit more sort of proud like that. So what I would do is get your ends to meet. So at the bottom like that. Hold the ends there at the bottom and then it should sit that little bit more proud and that's exactly how you want it to be. I'm going to change the foot over to a regular foot and put my needle back to the centre. There we go. And I'm just going to stay stitch that pocket in place. In fact, let me just trim that first because there's just a little bit. 
there we go I always say you know we are cutting these by hand they're not machine cut so there's always going to be a, perhaps a little bit of error with our cutting and forgive yourself for that so I'm coming from the bottom of the pocket up and that means my, my zip will stay in the right place for me and again you could put it on a long stitch because this is literally a stay stitch when you get to the teeth bring the teeth together and just hop over the top of them and again that holds that all in place and I'm, I suppose I'm stay stitching about an, um, an eighth of an inch perhaps perhaps a little less I'm not measuring um, it's just enough to hold all the layers together and again just going to keep my teeth together and just be careful of your machine make sure that it's okay stitching over zip teeth and the bulk <laughs> so there we are so I just trim some of my threads keep it neat you can guarantee you'll just finish and realize there's a whole load of threads that you haven't cut and you can see them there we go so there's my pocket in place there we go can you see it's in there and at the very end we've got um, uh, tassels to put on so there we are and it and of course now the zip is secure so it can't come off the end so then you've got two little panels there to go either side so with these we're just going to do a regular seam and then a top stitch so right sides together and obviously you're putting one either side so I'm going to start from the bottom and of course you you know by now we'll have stitched a few seams and um, you may want to square this up when you've finished um, just so it's it is square keep it nice and neat and this is the time once we've done this little part where we put our stabilizer on now you could use wadding if you wanted to um, I'm using just a regular iron on stabilizer and like I said before this is uh, a gift giving pouch um, okay so it might be a gift to yourself uh, but it doesn't perhaps it doesn't want to be so elaborate oh gosh that sounds like we're trying to be mean aren't we with our presents but you know what I mean we're, if this is like a gift bag instead of buying a paper one or you know if you buy one of those waxed papery ones we can't actually recycle those can we not that I'm aware of anyway certainly not in the not where I live in my area so I've stitched those two side panels on and let me show you so that's how it looks now so we're going to iron that and we're going to top stitch so I'm going to iron it away from the pocket so those seams are going to be ironed away I'll just check the other side to make sure I haven't puckered any of that up and it stops the bulk you know if you if you iron away from uh, the pocket and the zip it makes sense and it almost goes that way anyway so let's just iron that from the front as well so pretty in the pink just think of all the different fabrics that you might have and it really doesn't take a lot of fabric um, of course you, you'll need a piece of vinyl um, and like I said before there's lots around perhaps you need to find the one that suits you so now what I'm going to do is top stitch I'm going to lengthen my stitch a little bit and just come down the side there I suppose again it's about an eighth of an inch using a longer stitch always looks nice it looks deliberate um, and normally I would go if I'm going down here I'd go down here so it doesn't twist anything but we've already given it a good press so it should be fine just move that zip slider out of the way now this is where you might want to square this up a little bit um, just see how you feel about it when you uh, when you look at it so for instance if I show you on the overhead with this you can see that's 
a smidgen out just there, just a tiny little smidge. But I will just trim that away by hand. I'm not going to get my ruler, mat and rotary cutter up. And with the zip just there, the, the, the ruler um, wouldn't sit very comfortably on that. It would rock, so I can just snip that off by hand. So what we're going to do is bring up the iron again and we're going to now put the stabilizer on so i mean if you wanted to you could do stabilizer on the outer and the inner you could use the stabilizer on the wadding you could use wadding on its own uh, it's obviously entirely up to you let's get this the right way around i'm thinking which way does this go i was having a moment there um and you'll also find if you cut your wadding you know exactly to the measurements you might find that you're a quarter of an inch out now because of all the stitching we've done you know it's a bit like patchwork where you've brought all all bits and pieces together all different shapes together and i've just spotted a little black thread there let's take that out so um and sometimes you lose a little bit of the seam allowance or if you've been super cautious you you end up with a little bit a little bit too much <laughs> so forgive yourself and just enjoy making this and once you've made one I think you'll make a few more and you could obviously make them a little bit bigger a little bit smaller so I've stitched that um, stuck that to the back I'm being very careful of my zip because I don't want to melt it I don't think it will I mean I've never melted a zip yet but you just don't want to take any risks so Let's just give that another little bit. Sometimes stabiliser, it takes quite quickly and other times you have to sort of work at it. And it, it always says in the instructions about eight seconds, doesn't it? I don't know about you, but I think eight seconds seems like a lifetime. Very rarely do, do eight seconds. Perhaps I should. Right, so I'm going to just trim this down a little bit. Um, because I don't want to see the interface, I don't want to see that particularly. Um, and we're, we're, we're going to end up trimming quite a lot of this anyway. Well, you know, so it's neat. No, we're not going to trim a huge amount away. We're just neatening it up. But while I've got the opportunity, I'll just square it up a bit. And again, up the top, let's just take a little bit of that away. So I'm just cutting the interfacing. Um, You'll have to see how you go with yours, whether you need to cut any away. Um, there was a bin that side, but just on that side. Anyway. <laughs> right, so there's the front of our pouch made. How fab. Right, while I've got this in my hand, what we're going to do is something a little different. So I'm bringing in my lining piece. And from the top, so remember where your pocket is. Hard to see on this fabric, but there's the pocket, there's the zip slider. So this, I know this is the bottom, in other words. So on the top, I want you to measure down two inches from here down the side seams, okay? And in the pattern, it's really quite clear what that looks like. Um, but I just want you to have that as this as a visual. So on both sides, this side and that side, and on your lining as well, I want you to measure down two inches and I want you to cut a quarter of an inch thereabouts into the fabric. OK, so I'm going to put these down together and just line them up. OK, so and I'm just going to cut them up as is. You'll be wanting to do something slightly different with the vinyl but we'll get to that in due course so look i'm just going to put my tape measure over the top of this i've got both layers sitting on top of each other and i'm literally going to snip and it's 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 a it's a quarter of an inch i'm not going to measure it but you you'd be right to, to measure it if you wanted to and i've made a little snip there okay in fact let's just move that a little bit and just cut that lining a little bit more there we go and we're going to turn it round to the other side. Don't forget, it's from the top. I mean, all is not lost if you cut from the bottom, but, you know, try to avoid it. <laughs> so again, I'm measuring two inches and I'm cutting. 
and I'm cutting literally a quarter of an inch. I just want to make sure my lining is as well. I think my lining is just slightly smaller than my bag, but at this moment in time, it'll be fine. So I'm bringing up my little pressing mat now. So what I want you to do, ignore the lining for the moment. We're going to do the same with it in a sec, but let's just concentrate on the top of the bag or the front of the bag. So um, let's put the iron on. So what I want you to do, when that quarter of an inch, when we cut into that quarter of an inch just there, I want you to fold that piece in and press it, okay? So you're folding that in and pressing it, okay? And doing the same the other side, you're folding that in and you're pressing it, okay? And then the same with the lining. So let's find the right right bit. So again, folding and pressing. And actually, while I've got my iron on and my mat out, I'm actually going to give my lining a little bit of a press. I can see the fold lines of the fabric. And if we don't press it now, you probably won't have another opportunity. Because we're using vinyl, this isn't going to get that much more heat. So let me show you what that looks like. So both the lining and the out of the bag should look like that and it's quite clear. If I lift my arms up you can see on the darkness of my top what that looks like. So when we come to the zip now, oh I must show you how to put the tab on. This is really quite, uh, in, not important, but because we all do things in different ways, but I like to run through what I do. So you've got a two inch little square. Now because this zip tab, you're going to see it. It's on the outside of the bag. Can we see that? It's on the outside of the bag. So it's got to be neat as, as best you can anyway. So I'm folding it in half. I'm folding it, I folded it in half, got a crease. Now I'm folding my outside raw edges to that crease line. So that gives me that sort of shape there. You just about see it. And I'm just going to bring in the sides, but I'm not going to measure. I'm, I'm going to kind of just give it a little bit of ironing memory. <laughs> If anybody knows what that is, answers on a postcard. So again, I'm, I'm not really measuring it. And the reason for that is because this next part, uh, we're gonna actually fold it around the zip. And sometimes if we measured it exactly, it wouldn't fit because you've got to account for the zip tape, the zip teeth and all that sort of thing. Right, let's do this quite quickly. So we've got our piece that looks like that. You've got the raw edges. Um, facing in okay now here's my pretend zip because this is just for my demo for you guys and I've got the zip te teeth facing up at the moment we want to put that zip teeth down now I use my my quilting tape um, I do highly recommend it for this because it creates the most wonderful neat job and you don't have to pin it or hold it or manipulate it in any way it just sticks and it does the trick so look I've stuck my zip into that little piece of fabric and it's zip teeth down if I was to flip that over you'd see the right side of the teeth the right side of the fabric this side we're just seeing I notice that wasn't level so let's just level it up um, you're seeing the wrong side of the zip okay guys so I put a little bit of tape either side and there we go, another piece, so quite long really. And just squidge it with your nail and that'll help the glue to stick down onto the fabric. Okay, let's get my bits out of the way. So now you've got two pieces of glue across there. So you're literally going to fold this over and when you fold it over, just make sure that these don't split apart and that you're, because if I folded this just haphazardly, this could stick out, right? But we don't want to do that. We want to make a nice, neat job of it. So if anything, I'm going to sort of pull it in and then fold it, okay? And it will all fit in there. And although that top layer isn't stuck, that's fine. 
So another little bit of tape now. Gosh, it's oh, who invented quilting tape? They need a medal. So that's a wee bit long. Let's just cut that off a bit. Okay, so this, this part here, we're going to now bring our other half over. And don't forget, guys, this is still the wrong side of the zip. So although it's the wrong side, we still want it to be neat. So now I've got my glue strip there. I put my little pokey tool in there just to bring all those layers together. And when I do that, these ends kind of tuck in a bit. And all I'm going to do is just flip that over. And I tend to do that with my other hand, but I'm trying to do it so you can still see. But I flip that over, take my pokey tool out, and then just give it a squidge and, and fold that down. And that's glued that to there. So I don't have to put a clip in there. I don't have to put a pin in there. But all I need to do is just, oh, look at that. It's absolute perfection. Pop that under the machine. And I would stitch um, about an eighth of an inch so you're not going right up to this edge here because the chances of actually hitting the other side is pretty remote. So I would go a quarter of an inch, uh, sorry, an eighth of an inch across here, across here beautifully. And then you'll end up with something that looks like that. And it's a really nice, neat job. And both sides as well. Both sides is super neat. And that's what goes into your bag. So I hope that makes sense. And, and please try it. There's nothing to be frightened of. <laughs> she says. Right, so the next thing is to make sure that we have our both of our zips, so our front pocket zip, that's on my right at the moment. So I want the slider zip, when it's closed, to also be on the right. Okay, that's probably the most important thing. Otherwise, you'll have one zip slider one end, one zip slider the other end. So I'm taking my zip slider right up to my zip tab, just because it's out of the way. And I want to cut a little V in. So if I hold that up, if I can hold it, it's not going to happen. This part, this bottom part of the tape is what we're going to stitch into the front part of our pouch. OK, so I'm going to just make a little nick in that bottom part. There's a reason why we don't do it both sides because on the other side, because we're going to stitch vinyl in there, you'll see it. And I speak from experience. So I've made a little nick, just about see it. And then that's right in the centre of my zip. I'm just going to check that again. I'm not sure I was concentrating. Yes, yeah, fine. So that's right in the centre. So I want you to do the same with this. So open up those bits that you folded and just put your seams together. Find the centre. You can do measuring if you want, but just a little clip out like that is just what you need. So I've got a little V here. Let's turn it down. There we are. You can see it now on my on my top. <laughs> and we've got a little V on here. So all of that can be lined up. The main thing is, is to get these folded pieces absolutely perfectly placed. So if we do right sides together, we're going to put the lining in in just a sec. So I am actually clipping together exactly where the V's are. OK, so if we were to lift up my clip there, the V is underneath and this part's going to be folded here and this part's going to be folded here. OK, happy with that? Shall we just put a clip there so you can see? Yeah, let's do it. And when we stitch this in, I don't want you to stitch over onto the zip tape. Um, I just want you to stitch uh, start and stop just on the fold line of your, your side pieces here. So there's the front of the zip put in, well, clipped in. We then put the uh, lining in. And again, what we're going to do is actually line up the folds. So I'm not bothered at this stage about where the centre is, not with this one, because I just want these to be perfectly placed over the folds. So really, you're putting um, them right on top of each other. You, you just couldn't, uh, you know, you, you, the thing is, it's got to be accurate because you're going to see it. You're going to see it. So I can ease in anything else. I mean, it's a, what is it going to be? A millimetre out, maybe, if at all. Uh, depends on your cutting. Um, but you could ease the rest of it in. But just try and make sure that those folds are sitting right on top of each other. So there's the... There's the lining, because it's a different colour, I have to look. And there's the 
the front. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch from this side all the way down to, to encapsulate the lining and the front of the pouch and the zip. So I'm just going to change my foot over again. Let's see. There we go. And let's have a look. Let's, let's go down the... So swing it right over to the left, but I'm going to stitch on the right of I turned to the zip. I'm sure there's a method in my madness. So where all this is clipped together and it was absolutely right on top of each other, I'm just going to move my clip along so that, that will all stay hopefully in the right place. Just check your zip as well and make sure that you think that's equal. I'm not so sure it is. I've got a little sneaky suspicion I'm going to move this along just a fraction when something doesn't visually look right and I'm talking about two millimeters here isn't that crazy move it move it while you've got a chance so don't we just stitch it together and then think ah oh, wish I'd moved it so again just make sure those folded edges are sitting on top of each other I think they are I might have moved them slightly we'll see so I'm going to stitch from the edge of the folded part. So I'm not going to stitch on the zip tape at all. Not if I can help it anyway. And just do a little back stitch. Don't go mad. No need. Right. So let's get this all properly lined up now. Here we go. So it's all three layers. And take a little breather every now and again. <laughs> I know what zips are like for you guys putting these in. But sometimes, oh my gosh, there's a zip. It's fine. You've just got to do it. So as we're coming up to the other end now, again, I'm just checking to make sure that my folds are sitting on top of each other. And I'm fairly happy with how that looks. I also want you to be aware that as you come up to your... Uh, your the feet the feed dogs sometimes the feed dogs will flip that little fold out so just be aware of that keep an eye on it um, see it's, it's it's wanting to move so we'll just get the pokey tool in there and tell it no you're going to stay folded you wait when you do it you'll realize exactly what I mean or it'll be perfectly fine for you and I'm the only person in the world that ever happens to it's okay, I can take it. Okay, let's get all these bits and bobs out of the way. So a quick mention about my gold club. If you haven't joined already, there's no time like the present. Just pop to my website, find the link that says gold members sign up here. And then you have access to my Facebook weekly events, which is absolutely amazing. My girls love it. And of course, you get the free patterns as well. So if you want more information, there is actually a video on YouTube that you can have a little look at. So I'm just going to trim my threads, make it nice and neat. If you've got a machine that clips your threads, hurrah! If not, just do this. It's worth it. Right, so there we are. So there's our zip installed. If I hold it like that, okay? And if I fold the lining down, that's what it looks like. Just about see that. And then the lining's like that. So the next thing is to give this a good iron to get all that fabric in the right place because we're going to top stitch and we're not uh, just going to top stitch the zip but we're going to top stitch those little folds okay so just need to make sure that's all sitting beautifully um, just be careful of your hot iron with the teeth of your zip um, normally these are fine normally but wouldn't it be a nuisance and just make sure those folds are sitting nicely on top of each other. I know I keep banging on about that, but it really, the trouble is we get, like I said before, we're going to use vinyl and this open seam, if you like, can be seen. 
So you want it fairly neat. Well, you want it very neat, as neat as you can get it. So giving that a nice iron, that means the fabric is all in the right place. So see our little funny shape going on there. So we're now going to top stitch from the start of the fold and up across the zip and down. OK, that's all we're doing. And I'm going to change my foot over. So put that in, move the needle, get it in the centre. Now you might want to keep your zipper foot on. Um, it depends on what sort of zipper foot you've got and whether it behaves itself. So again, uh, an eighth of an inch, hold on to your threads. Again, it's because this is very visual. So just try to keep everything neat. About an eighth of an inch again, I'm not measuring, just doing it by eye. What would it be? Millimetres. I was thinking about this the other day. Do I start using millimetres? No. So, <laughs> but if you're a millimetre sort of person, maybe a couple of mil, is your way you're going to top stitch? <laughs> oh, I'd be too confused. <laughs> too confused. I don't know. And then you're coming down that little folded piece again, just to... Um, Neaten it up and bringing those two layers together. There we go. Right. So, cut your threads if you have to. I've got a machine that cuts my threads for me, but it does not do zigzag, and we need zigzag on this project. So there we are. So there's our front panel done. Isn't that exciting? We're practically there. Now comes the even more exciting part of stitching the vinyl. I've got a couple of tips for you here. First of all, change your foot to a Teflon foot. If you haven't got a Teflon foot, um, I'm not sure how you'd get on and whether there's a shortcut to this or not. Let's just see if I've got the right foot here. No, no, wrong foot. I did this the other day. I don't know what machine that fits. It's still a Bonina foot. It doesn't fit mine. So here's my vinyl and it's cut exactly the same size as the lining so that you don't have to panic. It's all the measurements are in the pattern. But we want to do what we did before and that is on the, um, so you'll go, the long side goes onto your pouch, okay? It goes onto the zip. So the long side goes onto the zip. The short side, let's hold it so you can see it. The short side goes down the pouch. So we need to cut, first of all, measure down two inches, cut in a quarter of an inch, but we want to cut that out. Okay, we want to get that shape that we have now with our pouch. So don't forget, because you know what, <laughs> it's gonna happen. So you're measuring down two inches and you're measuring a roughly a quarter of an inch in. So check again. So it's the, t it's the long side you're cutting across. And I'll show you in a sec what that looks like. And then you're cutting up. And if you want to measure this, measure this. We might trim it again in a little while. So again, two inches down from the top of where it's going to go in the zip. Quarter of an inch in. And it's hard for me to see. Hopefully when I hold it up against my top, you'll be able to see it better. Try and cut straight. It's been better. Okay, so let me hold this up. Let me hold it up like that. Can you see? Let me hold it like that. There we go. Can you see both? I think I need to polish my vinyl. It's covered in fingerprints. Um, each side has a little notch cut out, okay? Two inches down from the top and in about a quarter of an inch. Now, that should measure the same, thereabouts, as your pouch that you've just made, pouch front. And what we're going to do is we're going to place that onto our zip, okay? Now, if that's out, and what I want you to do is where the edge of the pouch is, where you know where the folds were, start at one side and just make sure that it's absolutely parallel. And I'm gonna put a little clip there just to hold it. OK, now you could bind this if you wanted to. OK, so I've just I'm just going to stitch the vinyl directly on top of the zip. But you may want to put a binding on the top of that entirely up to you. I'll leave that with you. Now, the other side is quite a bit out, so I'm just going to trim that back. 
Um, so it's just going where you cut before and then cutting away. That could be my bad cutting or my even worse stitching. So now <laughs> all those edges are parallel. In other words, where the folds end there, you've got the zip and then you've got the start of the vinyl and they need to be the same. It's nice on the eye if they're the same. If you're out a little bit, please don't panic. So I'm just going to trim a wee bit off the side here. To be honest, we'll cut this back in, in just a little while, but it keeps everything neat. So I've got the clip on that end and I've, I'm going, I, you can't pin it. So I can't put anything in the middle. I've just got to stitch it as I go. So I've got my Teflon foot on and I'm going to stitch where I can see. In other words, um, I can see I can the, the top of the zip, the right side of the zip is facing me. Um, and what you'll find is this vinyl will want to stick to here. So what I've done is I've got a little piece of, actually it's Tevoy stabiliser, um, and it's my sort of mock-up. You could do other things, but <laughs> I wanted to stop the stickiness of the vinyl onto the bed of my machine. So um, that's why I put this stabiliser on there. It's literally stuck on with some tape. So now I can put this under here. The, the vinyl will actually move about and be a little bit kinder to me than actually sticking to the bed of my machine and being a bit of a pain. So again, I'm just lining up. Um, I'm just thinking about where I'm going to put my needle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the foot to sit against the teeth of the zip, but I'm going to move my needle slightly over to the right, so it's a, it's the, so the um, stitching is more towards the the teeth of the zip. Okay, so I'm just going to move that across. Not much. I think that'll be fine. And you can still do a back stitch with these to lock it all in. Um, the only thing you can't do is to re-stitch this. You'll have holes in it. Um, so I want you to just take your time with this. So I'm doing a back stitch just to hold. I'm not really stitching a lot onto my tape, just like you did the other side. So my vinyl is kind of sitting up against the um, teeth of the zip. So everything is kind of sitting quite nicely. Take your time. And of course, the stabiliser is allowing everything to flow through the machine beautifully. You haven't got to worry because if the vinyl sticks and it will clings, it's such a nuisance. It's like you're fighting it the whole time. We don't want that. So it just goes straight up to the end, just over the end of the vinyl so it's caught, and then a couple of back stitches. That's it. Don't do any more than that. And like I said, you can put binding on here. Um, the idea is that it's a gift pouch. It's perhaps not going to be used, um, perhaps not every day. It might well be. Um, so it doesn't have to be super tough. I'm leaving my, my uh, Teflon foot on there because we're going to do some more stitching with the, uh, the, the vinyl. So I'm just trimming my threads away and then I'll hold it up so you can see what it looks like. There we go. Got a bit of a nest going on there, so I'll trim that back later. So let's show you the front. Okay. Well, front and back actually. So there's our vinyl attached, and it just it just kind of kisses the teeth of the zip. Um, you'll not be able to see it perhaps, and even if I even if I move it, no, you can't see. So okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do right sides together. Well, that's the right side. <laughs> right sides together. And I want you to have a quick look is what we're going to stitch now is a quarter inch seam allowance from this folded part here. So let's do it so you can see. So so this, let me get my scissors in. We're going to stitch from this part here. So where we stop stitching as a top stitch, you're now going to continue stitching almost. And we're going to come all the way down, all the way across, all the way up to, the, to here. That's where we're going to stop stitching. Then we're going to zigzag it. So it's, well, we're going to neaten it with the scissors first. Then we're going to zigzag it. And then we're going to do our boxy pockets. Now, we're still using the vinyl, but we've got the vinyl facing up so I can see through it. Uh, that means it won't stick to the bed of my machine. And also it means I can still see my fabric. It's quite nice, actually, because you can see all the layers at the same time. 
So quarter of an inch seam allowance thereabouts. Um, I'm following my fabric, I'm not following the vinyl. I think, my, I think my fabric is more accurate than the vinyl. I think I had a moment when I cut this vinyl. Um, just check the other side, make sure that's all lined up. There we go. And just line the, the whole piece up if we can. So how quite a lot. That's it, that's fine. Um, and then what we're going to do is trim back and, like I said before, zigzag. And if you need to move that lining, actually it's okay, we can. So you can adjust all your layers. Well, like I say, the great thing is, or perhaps even not the great thing, you can see everything. <laughs> that's what you might think, oh my gosh. <laughs> but this does really do a neat job. So again, little back stitch. Cut the threads. Keep cutting and trimming and keep everything neat. So we're just going to trim this back a wee bit um, just to neaten everything off. And then because we're going to see these seams, although we're going to zigzag them, we are going to see them through the bag. Um, so I suggest quite wide zigzag and quite close together. So maybe just under two in stitch length and five on the width of the zigzag. Okay, um, try that. Do a scrap first, and then you'll see if you like that particular width. I'm just gonna kind of go for it. So on the zigzag, up to five, and then my stitch length, well, it's on two, but I think I'll, I'll come down a little bit. Oh, that's my needle position. <laughs> no, no, I think that'll be fine. So we're zigzagging all the way around again. And what you mustn't forget to do, open your zip, which of course I didn't do, but I've got a little gap there. So hopefully I can open that up in a minute. <laughs> there we go, phew. So don't forget to open your zip guys before you stitch around. Mm. I bet you're shouting at the screen, are you? Okay, right, I'll do. So we're zigzagging, keep it neat, do a back stitch. And all the way down. Like I say, quite wide. I've got them five. My stitch length is maybe just under the two. It's just under the two. When you get to the corners, you can make sure that the needle is on the far right. We're going to cut those off in a minute though, because we're doing a boxy bottom. If you've got an overlocker, a serger, use that. You look very professional. If not, do what I'm doing, it's just a zigzag. Sometimes we have all the gadgets, but this is quicker than getting it off the shelf. It's only just behind me. Don't forget, a little back stitch. There we go. Super. So neat. So neat. And then just neat on the other side. And I knew I had a bird's nest there, but let's just ignore it for the time being. Um, but I would, well, I will actually pull all this threads out and actually neaten that off a little bit. Sometimes this machine will do a bird's nest and most of the time it will just take the, you know, take the threads. It's quite happy. So there we are. So there's our pouch. <laughs> and of course, turn it through in a minute. And you could ha leave it flat. You could leave it as, as is, like this, as a flat pouch. You don't have to... Obviously, you're going to turn it through, but you don't have to do the boxy bottom, but let's do it. Now, the great thing about using the vinyl, or maybe it's not a great thing, but you can see through and actually you can get the bottom and the side seam on top of each other perfectly, mm -hmm. which you normally can't do unless you put a pin in and wriggle it around. So I think that could be fine. So an inch 
that's what we're looking at guys we're going to measure an inch and we measure the inch from the end of the stitching not the point of the fabric okay so let's just bring that in measure I'm gonna pop my finger there again I've still got my Teflon foot on make sure it's absolutely on the money little back stitch oh not a zigzag little back stitch because don't forget um, once you've made a hole that's it guys Super. so what I'll do is I'll cut I'll cut that so I'm just cutting across there we go a lot of seams going on there and come on that's it and I'll just zigzag it my, my machine's got memory, so it knows <laughs> what I did last. Probably a good thing. <laughs> oh dear, that somebody has. Now you could do a back stitch here, just so you've got nice, neat ends. Let's uh, trim those threads off. Okay, super. So you will, will really get a nice uh, sort of join, you know, where you box your bottoms off because you can see through just make sure that the seams all go the same way so if that seam is pointing that way then keep it pointing that way and you can always nest the other one so just pull those seams out pull the fabric out nest them on top of each other it's great how you can see it's like I said normally you can't so again I'm just going to measure that inch don't guess it it's amazing when we think that's an inch and it absolutely isn't. So I'm just measuring. So you're measuring from, let's have a little, another little look. You're measuring from the end of the stitching, not the, um, the point of the fabric. Let's just move that needle across. That's it. And you can, like I said before, you can backstitch this vinyl. Um, you're putting more holes in, but you are securing the ends of your threads. Uh, I suppose you could put a little dob of glue in there, something like that, if you're a little nervous. But it's only a pouch. It's not anything that has... To, it's not structure. It's not a piece of clothing. Um, it's, not a, it's not like it going, it's a backpack or anything like that. So, again, we're just doing the, the cut across... Oop, that's it and then the zigzag a little bit of a back stitch so satisfying to do a zigzag I do love a zigzag and let's just move that out the way remove all these bits and bobs and that actually is our pouch made Apart from the tassels, and I think the tassels are in my drawer. Let's see? Yep. Oh, dropped one. Somebody will worry. What? A, what, what is that tassel? <laughs> so we just need to put the tassels on. Now I'm going to cut my tassels. I'm going to take about an inch off because they are quite long. I think they're five inches from sort of the hangy bit right down to the end of the tassel. It's quite big. So I don't want them that big. I suppose if your bag was bigger, it'd be, be fine, wouldn't it? Be in proportion. So, a little, little bit of a haircut. That's a spare. Let's get rid of the bits. Put them in my, my Ava. So there we are. Have a little brush down. Okay, so there's our pouch made. Now, don't worry about turning through. This is, this is specialist vinyl. It's meant for bag making so although it looks horrendous and you're going to crease it actually initially you might a little but actually it just kind of with the heat of the room or whatever it just kind of goes back to normal again it's fantastic it's really great stuff you you as I say I, I can put one on my YouTube as to um, what I've used um, but I often find if, if I do that 
the, the place where I got it from doesn't have the quantities that, that you guys would need and it's, it, they sell out within about half an hour. So that sometimes there's little point in me doing that. But you find your own. It's bag making vinyl, vinyl suitable for bag making, that sort of thing. Okay, so there we are. So there's our bag made. There's the zip. Fortunately, both zip sliders at the same end because we thought about it. And you might want to just, I'm not going to, you can't give it a press, impossible. But you can kind of finger press it and sort of, you know, work at it. You can perhaps fold this end over, squidge it down. I don't know, you can work at it, but it, <laughs> I've made it look very peculiar. But it's going to be filled with goodies, surely. So, to put the little tassels in, just fold them in half and try and get the fold to be as small as you can get it. And then just pop it through the end of the zip slider. And you can guarantee I'm not going to do it. There we are, I've done it. I think. Yes. Whew. It's always better when you're doing things in your own time, surely. So keep that over there. That's one. I quite like these uh, tassels. I'll do it from this side. Not that it makes a jot of difference, I'm sure. Um, pull that through. So you're pulling the loop through and then you're just literally pushing the tassel through the loop and pulling it tight. It might well loosen up. You can just put a spot of glue on that, couldn't you? So there is our pink version made. Super duper. There we are. Don't think we've got any more loose threads. Threads. So you can see through it now, look. And I quite like it that the the lining is the same as the front. It looks quite neat, doesn't it? The same. But of course you can pop your bits and bobs in there. So let's open it up. There we go. Let's do it so you can see. If I transfer a couple of bits. Right, sit. No, it's not going to sit. So let's just transfer a couple of bits out of this one. Nice fabric, this one. It's all glittery. Looks really wintry, doesn't it? There we go. We've got something stuck there. Yeah. Right, so we've got two candles. So we could pop those in. And you can push your seam down so it sits nicely. Four soaps. Four little soaps. There we go. And then your little cloth. And you could put some nail polishes and all that sort of thing in there as well. And there we are, look. It's nice, isn't it? Because they can see exactly what they're getting. On the other side, just looks like a regular pouch. So there we are. So that is the gift giving pouch. It's available as a download on my website, lizzycurtis.com. Do stop by and have a little look. There are loads of patterns on there now. And I really think you'll enjoy making this gift giving pouch. And I hope you make loads. Mm -hmm.